things are slowly changing. Some zoos are now instrumental in reshaping our attitudes and values about nature and animals. 21st century zoos are more committed to animal welfare. Many stopped animal shows long ago, and few animals are taken from the wild. Some zoos now believe in the concept of care for life, where a zoo takes responsibility for captive animals throughout their lifetime. Responsible zoos have stopped breeding animals unless they are clearly needed to strengthen the population. Endangered species are preserved through species survival plans, scientific programs designed to maintain healthy gene pools. Today, public opinion and television programming, a combination that once propelled the cycle of surplus and exploited animals, has become a force for their ethical treatment. By the late 1980s, television was less focused on animals as entertainers. For the first time, we were seeing wild animals that were free. They were in their natural habitats, exhibiting natural behaviors. Little by little, we began to question the inhumane practices of many forms of animal entertainment. Today, we are becoming intelligent and concerned observers understanding that we have a responsibility to treat all animals humanely. Just calling a place a zoo or sanctuary doesn't mean the animals are treated properly. And there are still hundreds of roadside zoos and pseudo-sanctuaries in America. For 200 years, traveling circuses have crisscrossed the United States, and elephant shows have been center stage. Elephants have several basic needs, to forage for vegetation, to form family relationships, and to have space to roam. Elephants in the wild live in extended families made up of several generations. Young ones stay with their mothers for years and walk many miles a day with their families. Just for the sake of entertainment, elephants and circuses are taken from their mothers at an early age and are physically and mentally controlled. Backstage, they're often chained for hours or days at a time. Their training is based on deprivation, physical punishment, fear, and intimidation. Incredibly, the American Zoo Association still allows its accredited zoos to physically discipline elephants. Fortunately, some zoos are now questioning their own ability to provide a healthy physical and social environment for elephants. They are asking themselves whether elephants should be in captivity at all. Circuses and traveling shows also use inhumane practices to train other exotic animals. Lions, tigers, and leopards are big crowd pleasers. But what people don't know is that when they come bursting into the arena, it's not because they're happy to see us. They're not energized to be performing. They're scared. Traveling animal acts are three ring circuses of misery, mistreatment, and early death. In spite of federal laws that are intended to protect these captive exotic animals, licenses are seldom revoked. People who pay money to see a wild animal in a cage or perform in a show are unaware of the suffering that goes on. There are no traveling acts, regardless of appearance, that are capable of eliminating the stress of constant travel or satisfying the appropriate physical, social, and psychological needs of an exotic animal. 
What must the quality of life be like for these captive animals? Do we want these sideshows to continue? We should also consider the captive whales and dolphins that entertain us. For our amusement, marine mammals were trained to perform tricks. These same tricks are now passed off as natural behaviors, and the shows promoted as educational. But what is natural about a human being standing on an animal's face? Like an elephant that needs space to roam, whales and dolphins need space to swim. No pool can meet the needs of an animal who's used to diving to depths of 1,600 feet and swimming many miles each day. We should ask ourselves, should whales and dolphins be in captivity at all? Public concern has recently led to the banning of animal acts in several places in the United States and around the world. There's also pending legislation intended to put an end to using elephants in circuses and restricting the ownership of exotic pets. Each of us, in our own way, must become an animal advocate, not just a human advocate. We need responsible legislation to protect all animals. This lion is one of the fortunate few to be rescued by a zoo. Katie was purchased to guard a crack house. But as Katie got bigger, it wasn't just intruders who were afraid of her. Her owner was terrified as well. When this bear was just a cub, he was used as a mascot for a beer company. But by the time he was two, he had outlived his usefulness. He was then sold to a private individual who locked him in a cage for 20 years. Not surprisingly, he became aggressive after local teenagers began beating him repeatedly with a baseball bat. And the scar on his snout is from being stabbed with a pitchfork. He was rescued by one of the few zoos who would help him. He has now learned bear behaviors like swimming, foraging, and how to play with other bears. One of the most dramatic rescues is Berla, an arctic mammal condemned to a tropical existence. Berla was just a cub when she was captured in Manitoba, Canada, a frozen land of icy waters and bitterly cold winds. For her, it was home, but she soon found herself 